Hello, hi, howdy, and welcome to the official CTR Guild Karazan Lore Tour with our special guest, Miss Alessander. Now tonight, folks, this is an official CTR Guild event. If you don't know what that means, that means simply that this event was posted on convertterade.com backslash guild. There you will find our guild calendar with a whole bunch of events all hosted by your amazing, wonderful, and very hardworking event planning staff. Now, you can check out all sorts of fun stuff there from lore runs, hide and seek, LFR, boss tours, raids, all sorts of amazing things. I say that to say this. We are tonight in a public mumble channel. Convert to Raid is a family-friendly guild. Please keep that in mind um, when you are talking. We're going to hear a lot of talking from Alessandra tonight. And this is the last you will probably hear from me. Miss Alessandra, you can take it away from here, ma'am. Thank you for doing this for us. Not a problem. Um, I'm Alessandra in CTR. I'm Bandit. I'm the little gnome with the pink pigtails. And what I need to know is how much do you guys actually know about Karzan and just general lore in general because um, there's a lot of history of Karzan and Mediv that kind of go across a lot of Azeroth history and I don't know how far I should go because it's a, it's a lot of history to get through. Um... If we're answering, I guess uh, this is Barf. I raided Kara back in the day, and I read The Last Guardian. So, I mean, that's about as much Karazhan lore as there is out there, as far as I'm aware. Pretty much. Anybody else? I'm pretty similar to what Barf just said. Okay. I More. meant to read The Last Guardian, but I got busy with other things this weekend. As Mage, I, I've raided Karazhan a few times, and so I've read quest texts and different things like that, but I have not read any, much of anything about it outside of out, outside of game. So this is That's, all. I'll, most of this is going to be new to me. There's um, when I started doing research for this uh, event, I learned some things I'd forgotten and some things that I never knew because there are there's a there's books there's the the book that uh, somebody mentioned. And then there's uh, some kind of a graphic novel that was set here with some twins, and they fight uh, the demon lord, and well, the imp, not the demon lord. And I got most of my start with Karzan lore from Know Your Lore back in the old, not to be named podcast days, uh, and Stickney Matt Rossi because uh, she loves this place, and I got to really love it through her. And then I actually got here, and it was just so amazing. So. Uh, the short summary of it is that Karazhan is the house of Medivh. Medivh was probably one of the more powerful mages, if not the most powerful mage, human mage at least, uh, to be on on, uh, on Ezra. And a lot of names that I'm going to go through are actually pretty familiar to you because of Draenor. Uh, for instance, his apprentice was Khadgar, who you all know. He worked with Gul'dan to open the Dark Portal to uh, to Draenor to summon the orcs through. Of course, you know who Gul'dan is. You know about the Dark Portal. We've been there. <coughs> a lot of the orcs that he worked with and brought over were actually Grom, Hellstream, Ner'zhul, and uh, Blackhand. You definitely know who Blackhand is right now. Um, nobody actually knows who built Karazhan, or at least it hasn't been said in lore yet. The earliest thing known about this valley is that there was some kind of an explosion, according to Medivh. Um, there was an explosion here, and it called out this this valley. And then suddenly here was Karazhan. And Khadgar was kind of uh, not believing of this story, and Medivh says stranger things have happened. And that's true, because his life is pretty weird. Um, his house, his castle here, actually kind of reflects his life, because... A lot of the life that he lived is reflected here, literally, because it's a 
It was originally built on the confluence of all the ley lines of Azeroth. So it's the most magical place on Azeroth until uh, Azeragos, the blue dragon flight leader in Wrath of Lich King, started redirecting all the ley lines to Northrend. That's a whole different thing I'm not going to get into, but at the time it was. And as was, a result, it was. It was yes? Malagos or Azeragos? Uh. It's Very probably camp. Malagos now that I think about it. I get kind of confused with all the ghost names. And we're going to run into another one. Um, so, it's an extremely magical place, and it was always uh, time new, time kind of fluid, I guess you would put it, because in the book uh, that you can read about this, there's scenes of, of other things that happen in different time zones. Like, you know, in the past and the future, you can like turn a corner and you can see things from the past and the future happening. And that doesn't happen here, but we do see a ton of ghosts from people that used to be here, so it's kind of the same. I mean, they could be reflections of people in the past, but they seem to be dead, so they're ghosts, so it's kind of confusing. And uh, another thing that's kind of confusing is uh, Medivh didn't really like people, and you're going to see a lot of people in here as trash mobs. So why they're here, I don't know, but we'll see. <coughs> Uh, let's see, so, uh, Medivh was the son of Egwin, who was the guardian of Tirisfel, the first female. She was born 500 years ago, well, actually 850 years ago. 500 years ago, she became the guardian. The guardian is, uh, the receptor, a very strong mage in her own right, and then she's also the receptor of, of the council of mages, very powerful mages, that chose to share part of their power so that somebody else, not them, would have to go off and fight demons because uh, demons were threatening Dalaran. They didn't feel like going to do it, but they needed somebody to do it, so they chose a protector. And 500 years ago, she was chosen. She was not the best choice. She was powerful, but she wasn't very wise. And things happened. She defeated Sargeras, so she thought uh, Sargeras infected part of her body. She got pregnant for various reasons. Uh, Sargeras took over the child. The child was born. The child is Medivh. He was raised in Stormwind with his father, who was the court sorcerer at the time. And you're going to see uh, probably Medivh and King Leanne, who was his boyfriend champion or companion. Uh, Anduin Lothar. You may know Anduin. It's the name of uh, Varian's son, who is also one of the people that's probably going to be in the movie that's coming up. And... Uh, there's other people. In fact, I think we're going to see some portraits of them in here, unless I forget. But I always like to look at them, so we'll see. Um, when Medivh was growing up, he practiced magic because he was good at it. And then all of a sudden he fell into a coma and he woke up uh, 20 years later and he was possessed by Sargaris when he did it. Uh, which was a problem. <laughs> uh, under the thrall of Sargaris, he went to uh, make a deal with the orcs to summon them to this world for complicated reasons that I'm not going to get into. And you can see what happens in that in the Caverns of Time instance, the Black Morass, which is a time-walking dungeon, which is up this week. So, yeah, you can go see that if you haven't seen it before. It's kind of interesting. I always liked it. Um, then, uh, because he was summoning the orcs and starting a war and trying to get all of his friends and killed and Stormwind and armies and and basically see the movie next year and see what happened. And Khadgar, his apprentice, and uh, Anduin Lothar uh, killed him in Karazhan. Uh, that put an end to him for a while, but as a ghost he kind of floated around and then uh, was released from the demon spell because he was dead and no longer of use to Sargeras. Um, got resurrected by his mother uh, and started going around, I think it was Warcraft 3, but I'm not entirely sure because I never got to play the games. And he went around the form of a crow and he tried to warn people. And there's a cinematic that has a crow going to Terranus Menethil, who's uh, Arthas' father, over in Lordaeron, which is now called Undercity. Um, trying to basically warn them that uh, things are coming, you guys need to get ready for this. And really nobody was listening. But by the end of that whole thing, 
there was another war. Uh, Archimon, who is another name you now know, uh, tried to destroy the World Tree, Nordschild. Um, the elves became not immortal anymore. Uh, so there's there's a really a lot that Bedeva is responsible for, which is interesting. And uh, Chris Metzgen has said that Medivh is his favorite character, not Thrall. He's also Anne Stickney's favorite character, and I don't know about that, but he's definitely interesting, and he's seen a lot of interesting times. So, now, over here, if we want to come this way, follow the bouncing gnome, uh, is what's called the crypts. And I want to start here because, well, it's outside, and it used to be like a place you were supposed to have been able to get into and we all thought that eventually it would be and maybe it will someday but so far it hasn't yet there's I can't really hold on that's better uh, there's a church here that's been abandoned but then there's a crypt over here and also a pet tamer hello Lydia I already beat her today because yeah and the thing about the crypt is that it has a gate. In times past, people could kind of glitz their way through here. They weren't really supposed to, but they did. So you can find instances on the internet where they're talking about what they found here. And let me scroll down in my notes. All right. Crypts of Karazhan is what they're called. And there's several rooms down here. Uh, the first room is called the Well of the Forgotten. That's the room we're kind of seeing a little bit here. And it says, The first area you see as you enter the crypt is a small room with an equally small hole about the right size for a person to fall through. If you fall through, or go through, if we could, it's called the Pit of Criminals. At the bottom of the well is a massive pile of skeletons. When I say massive, I mean thousands of people who apparently met their demise falling down that small hole, or perhaps falling is the wrong word. There's also the Pauper's Walk, a less direct way to get down there. It's a winding path through an underground graveyard. Some of the crypts in the wall are open, some are shut, but the overall impression is simply buried dead. There's also an area with a pond called the Tomb of the Rep Unrepentant. Um, there isn't much about that that I know of, but still kind of creepy. And to really get the creepy factor, the favorite part of everybody down here is called the Upside Down Sinner's Room. It's a bunch of people that are hung on hooks from chains from the ceiling, and some of them have nooses, like someone tried to hang them. Uh, yeah. I've never seen it because, like I said, you had to glitch your way down there, or uh, sometimes people were able to blink down there. Uh, it's a shame because I would really kind of like to see it, uh, but it's here, so I wanted everybody to see it because... It's a thing, and a lot of people are really interested in this place and would like to really see more of it developed, especially the Upside Down Sinner's Room. You'll see a lot of people, when they're talking about cars on, are talking about the Sinner's Room. Uh, next, we're going to mount up because we need to fly slightly. This is the side tower. This is the entrance to get into Karazhan. Once you get a certain distance in uh, a side door at the top of this, there's a walkway. If you fly up a little bit, you can see the walkway. It goes to a door. When you get to a certain point in the dungeon, that door will be able to unlock for you. So if you had to leave and then you come back, you could just go straight in the walkway instead of having to go the entire way. There's also a NPC that will teleport you once you've cleared out uh, Shade of Iran, which is uh, Medivh's father, the ghost here. Hate when that happens. Alright, and now we're gonna go see the village, which is right outside the main gate. And you all thought we were just gonna zone right in. Uh, 
the village, there's not really much that's known about this place. It's not even mentioned in the book. But there is this uh, entrance that goes down and to what's called the Master Cellar. And there's another one over here. In one of these two places, there's a very rare spawn pet you can get called the Restless Shadeling, which I would really like to get. But um, the only thing that's down here right now, and since nothing's actually ever been written about either of these places in the Master Cellar, I can't really tell you much about it. But if you look around down there, it's it kind of makes me wonder. But the speculation is that this is where these servants lived. But since Medivh didn't like having people around, it's really kind of, you know... My theory is that since the tower is uh, flows through time, and it could be the people that originally built the place before Medivh did, uh, but nobody knows and nobody said. So when you guys are ready, uh, we're gonna... now we're gonna log in. Almost. Uh, There is, or used to be, a quest to um, attune yourself. Uh, well, that's been a while, many years. The Blizzard used to have what's called attunement quests to their dungeons and raids. Well, the raids at least. This is complicated, so give me a sec to look it all up. I did this a long time ago. Uh, you can still do it, I think, unless it's been taken out, which would be a shame. But the attunement starts where you talk to Archmage Alturus, who's one of the guys here. And if you stay and listen to these guys a while, just kind of hang out, they're talking about ways to use magic to get inside because they know there's stuff in there. They've sent in Kirantor mages. They're from the Kirantor of Dalaran, by the way. And they're having some problems because the people they sent in never come out. They don't know why, and they don't really want to go in themselves. The but anyway, the attunement quest is... You talk to Archmage Alturus here. Well He'll met. give you a quest called Arcane Disturbances and Restless Activity. <clears throat> then you go to the Dalaran Crater, uh, and then go you go to friend. Shatrath, and you talk to Khadgar, who we all know Khadgar. Khadgar sends you to retrieve three fragments. Uh, you go to the Shadow Labs, you go to Steam Vault, and you go to Architraz. Architraz is another time-walking dungeon this week. And then you go to the Black Morass, which is another time-walking dungeon, where you run into Medivh, who's summoning the orcs through. And you basically walk up to him while he's trying to summon the orc and go, oh, hey, give me a minute. He's like, hey, that looks like mine. Oh, that looks like the one I gave Khadgar. Here, you better take this one instead. That one looks, that one looks wrong in time. And he hands you a completed uh, key, basically. You take the key back to Khadgar, who's a little surprised that you've got the thing. And then send you back here, and you can now go inside. It sounds a lot easier than it really was at the time. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, Atiesh. Um, now, next for Amos is a flying dungeon outside of Winterguard Keep in Northrend. But back at the time, it used to be floating over the Plaguelands, uh, I think, because I didn't see it at the time. But Eastern plagues, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Etiesh was the staff that Medivh used, and it's no longer in the game, which is really a shame because, although it doesn't look like much, it's mostly a staff with like a little clone thing on the end. It had ravens that would fly around, and it's so incredibly rare that if you had it, it would be, you know, you would want to bring it out, uh, because it was so hard to get. Almost nobody's got it, and now it's not even in the game. But it also has a lot of, go here, fetch me this, fetch me that. Um, and it's a corrupted staff because it's part of Car Sargeras is imbued into it. And it's even in the, the lore when you mouse over some of the pieces of it, that there is a taint of Sargeras. Which makes sense because Medivh was also tainted by Sargeras. Sargeras is another name you hear a lot when people talk about lore and like people they want to go fight in the next expansion is they really want to go fight Sargeras. Uh, if you don't know, Sargeras is the Fallen Titan. He's Titans are a race of beings that go around remaking planets. And there's evidence of Titan ruins all over this place. Sargeras was the one that was chosen to go off and fight uh, the chaos that was messing with their creations. 
And eventually he decided that uh, it was just too messy, so he was just going to wipe the slate clean and start all over. So he went and um, the other Titans didn't like his plan because they were just trying to create all this stuff they didn't want to mess with. So he went to the things he'd been uh, trying to destroy because you can't destroy demons as we now are aware of because of Archimonde. You can't destroy a demon, it just goes into the nether planes. So all the demons he had been destroying, he just had locked them up in the planes because he knew you couldn't destroy them. So basically he went to the planes, got them back out, and said, hey, want to work for me? And they're like, uh, sure. So that was his plan, is he was going to unleash this army of demons on everything, have them kill everything, and then he was going to kill the demons. So plan still in progress. And that's why people really want to go kill Zargeras. And as you are aware, because of Draenor, we're very big into the whole demons and Archimon thing. All right, now we're going inside. If you're all still awake. The first section here is the gatehouse, and there are three ways to go from here. The normal way people go is straight ahead to the left because that's where you get the rare mount drop and I do mean rare because I've been farming it. We're going to start over here in the trash because not many people know about this. In fact, I used to know but I forgot so I feel bad. Uh, basically how this works is that this area is full of spiders, bats, and uh, hellhounds. So kill all the spiders, bats, and hellhounds that you see and when we've killed enough of them one of three rares will spawn. It's either a rare spider, a rare hound, or a rare bat. Uh, but we have to kill a lot of the stuff here first. Uh, you might want to put loot on free-for-all or something because otherwise we're going to be doing a lot of rolling. There's a ton of greens in here. And each of the things, at least I know for sure for the bat, if the, I mean, if the spider spawns, it spawns right here. And it is, it's stealth, but I mean, it is so stealth that at level 100, it's, it's still invisible until you get right up on it. Uh, the other ones I think are also stealth, but I don't know where they spawn. They spawn in, you know, the bat area or the dog area. They don't really have, I mean, they're not really a boss, they're just rare. They're not really rare because you spawn them by killing everything. So it's just kind of a thing most people forget about. So I thought we should probably start with that. If you see something or track something, I don't know if hunters can track these guys. And also if it's the rare dog that spawns, I'm told that if there's a hunter here that it is uh, tameable. I don't know for sure, but that's what I'm told. So Sly, that's up for you. If it spawns, go for it. If you want it. Wally's here too, but yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, but like I said, I don't see anything, so, but they're supposed to be stealth, so for all I know, they are here somewhere, just hiding in a corner. But one of the three should be spawned somewhere by now. I will track Pet and Beast, because that's what it will be. Yeah, they'll have a name. Um, Hyakas the Lurker, Rokad the Ravager, Shadakith the Glider. That would be the bat. And if anybody's a skinner, these things are begging to be skinned. But I don't have the time. <laughs> I don't see anything in the Hellhound room. So, let's see, bats. Oh, it's pretty, pretty sad if nothing happened, because I was in here earlier to test it out. And I got, uh, which one did I get? I think I got the bat to spawn. Oh, well, that's a shame. You're not saved, are you? No, no I did it on an alt. Alright, let's try one more time to check out by this campfire. And then we'll move on. Oh well. I'm sorry, but you could go back and check another time. The other side of this actually does come out in the kitchens area. This first place is kind of a loop, so you can... Oh, by the way, is everybody lost or with me? 
I don't know. Actually, I think I might be a little lost. Oh, wait. Here's where I am. Okay, here's where we start. All right. Back to the main hall where we started. Straight ahead up these stairs here is the way to the uh, ballroom. And there's a party in progress. And by party, I mean there's a theater going. There's a um, big banquet going on. It's pretty fancy, actually. And I, I would love to raid their clothes because I really like them. Okay, we're missing somebody. Me. All right. I'm just double right. checking all the rooms. All right. <coughs> now the thing is that I was kind of hoping that we could not raid um, through the fights too fast because, well, you know, we're just going to slaughter everything. So if like one person could try not to kill things, um, you know, just like hit it once, see how it happens, let the mechanics roll a little bit, and then, you know, so just like if you know how to turn your auto attack off and stuff like that. But, you know, if you want to raid through it, uh, we can do that. But some of the mechanics are kind of interesting in some of these fights. So basically this is the way to the rare horse mount. Um, all the horses are dead, so you don't actually have to kill the horses, but uh, they used to just, uh, you know, aggro on you. And in fact, they still will sometimes if you get close enough to them. And if the horse boss stays up too long, they will also come to his aid, so we probably should actually kill them all. Don't kill Midnight, though, because that's the one that we need. The horses have a fear thing that they do, which is actually really annoying because it actually works. Hey look, we just found someone's pants. Oh no, feet, shoes. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff around here. Um, the thing about Midnight is that you gotta kill him slow because first of all it's just him. You fight him for a little bit, and then his master, Atuman the Horseman, Huntsman, will come up and shout, and then he'll jump on the horse. Well, actually, they'll fight side by side, then he'll jump on the horse. You can't kill him till he's actually on the horse, because otherwise you won't get the loot. And like I said, there's a super, super rare horse that he drops, which I really would like. But if the horse actually drops, roll need. Okay. Uh, Cuddles, you want to try not to kill him? Since you're closest. Yeah. I'll sort of just grab aggro and turn my back on him. Sure. That'll work. Come, Midnight! Let's disperse this petty rabble! Alright, get him. As far as I know, he doesn't really have a mechanic oh, other than he'll just, like, Someday try and stab you. Okay. Nothing. Sad. Loot in here is not bad, actually, because there's a ton of greens and purple that drops. And if you've run this place enough times, it doesn't take very long. There's a ton of trash here. And it does give you rep. This, uh, Corin the Blacksmith, uh, I think you need Honored, will, uh, sell stuff to it, which is really handy, because, like I said, there's a lot of trash in here. And if you go near him, all these NPCs, the ghosts, will attack, but that's all right. Uh, if you need to sell off, uh, there you go. Um, if you went up these stairs, you come out of the kitchens. And like I said, this place is kind of a like a circuit. So I usually go the other way because I like to kill Morose because he's got stuff. So, come on down to see Morose. I tend to actually not go through the kitchen, but if you, you know, want to explore the kitchen sometime, that's one way to get there. Uh, Calliard is for one of the quest lines. But I forget exactly what he does. Um, I think it's probably my note somewhere. Uh, later on, once you've gotten a certain distance in here and you've killed, I think it's Aran, uh, Neil Aran, the Shade of Aran, you can talk to Berthold and he will teleport you up to Aran's room. So you don't have to run quite so far because it's a really, really long dungeon. So, going to see Rose. And this is the ball. And they're doing this nice, uh, nice stately dance. Yeah, it's kind of neat actually. I kind of like it. But they'll attack. And these valets and the guards, 
can't see invisible. So, sometimes you can sneak past, sometimes not. Uh, feel free to kill anything you like. Uh, I think it's kind of neat, all this food and stuff like that, and all these guests, but I'm just weird. You see these statues, like these busts over here, all over the friggin' place? Because I guess Buddy was super into art, which is a little weird. Or maybe the guy ahead of him was, that liked holding banquets. Um, unfortunately, there's no idea who they are. But some of the paintings, we actually do know who they are. So that's alright. <clears throat> Morose is dining with some nobles. So if someone wants to go and uh, poke him a little bit... I don't know what all of his mechanics are, to be honest. I think he has some kind of a mind control or like a disorient. Unannounced to visitors, preparation. Yeah, back in the day, you used to have to like uh, shackle undead like two of his dudes because he would just beat the turds out of you. And he, um, like, I guess you would shadow step and garrote you. He was he was not easy actually back in the day. Oh no, none of these guys were easy back in the day. Like when we get to the dragon in the uh, astronomer's uh, astronomy uh, observatory. That was hard. I remember trying to do that fight. And that was wrath. That wasn't even in DC. No. Where was I? Here he goes. Five minutes remaining on that debuff. Sweet. So that lasted the entire fight then, I guess. Quite likely. Morose was the steward of Medivh. Uh, he actually had seen that Mer Medivh was going to kill him, which was probably like super depressing, but he stayed long enough for Medivh to actually kill him. So I guess loyalty. Um, one of the things that you'll find with loot here is that a lot of loot has like special names or historical sig right. significance. Like one of the things that Morose can drop is called the Royal Cloak of Arathi Kings. Uh, Anduin Lothar, the guy that killed Medivh and grew up with him and was one of his childhood companions, uh, is the last of the Arathi Kings, Arathor. Um, it's kind of neat. I figure he probably dropped it when he was here trying to kill Medivh or visiting Medivh sometime. Although I think that was the only time he was actually here was to kill Medivh. So how Morose got it, I don't know. But so might as well kill him. I think that's probably it for the mechanics. You run. As he disappears. How terribly clumsy of me. I do like that guy. You were saying earlier that um, there were visions and there would be like suddenly you'd be looking down a hallway and you'd see the past or the future or something. In the book, Morose would walk around the, the mansion wearing glasses on with blinders on the side so he could only look straight forward so that he would avoid seeing visions. He was he like seeing them out of the corner of his eye. It's probably for the best, because I think that'd be really kind of creepy. But this is such a fascinating place. There's just weird things here. I love it. Uh, now we're going to cross through the ballroom. So um, any of these guys can drop trash. Um, they drop also patterns for various things, uh, especially jewel crafting, I know. So uh, pretty much kill everything here and loot and sell if you need to. We can go back to the blacksmith, or I have a traveler's mammoth we can duck outside since we're still near the beginning. Will of Edward the Odd. Ooh, close. It's pretty good looking, actually. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice looking. It goes really well with my shoulders. Ah, crap. I meant to roll greed. Does anybody want that? Because I'm leather. But if someone wants it, I'll give it to you. Uh, I, I would roll with on it with you. I put greed. I, I might make an outfit out of that. Okay. Uh, come up and open trade with me. Well, you rolled a 93. I mean, I can, I can no, do a I slash roll. roll. 
No, 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 no. This is, this is not for me, so just come on up. I open trade. I'll just hand it to you. Like I said, I'm here to get the horse. I'm going to be here for years. <laughs> I hope not. Enjoy, and I want to see a picture of your transmog when you finish it. Okay, thank you. All right, now we're going to a really super interesting place that makes no sense whatsoever because Medivh didn't like people. Uh, if you've been in Black Temple, you probably know what I mean because Black Temple, for no reason whatsoever, has a brothel in it, and so does Karazhan. Um, yeah. If we'd gone through through the spiders route in the kitchens, this is where we would have come out. Oh, someone's got Kure. I love that. And, um, yeah, so if you go in these side rooms here, there's these, uh, ladies, shall we say. The, the concubines. Recall this. Yep. And I'm in the first room on the left because there's paintings in here. I really wish we could get their clothes because some of these outfits are really cool. So the reason I want to show you guys the paintings is because like this one here, this lady with the kind of blondish reddish hair, she's supposed to be the sister of King Lane, I think. I don't know if she's going to be in the movie, but King Lane will be for sure. Uh, there's a lot of portraits of her around. There's one of her as like a little girl with little pigtails. Uh, this is obviously slightly older. I guess she's a paladin. I don't know anything about her, and that's really sad because she would have been interesting, but uh, she's before, you know, the time when we actually had anything. I don't know if she was in Warcraft, uh, the games or anything. Um, then on the other side, you got this guy in your standard Stormwood armor with a helmet on, so there's no way to tell who he is. But... Uh, there's other paintings around here, so moving on down the hall. I didn't even know Lane had a sister. I didn't either. Thanks. Uh, gotta thank Anne Stickney for that, because she is like the lore goddess for sure. Okay, so we got another painting here, and I want to say this is King Lane here on the left in the blue. Or it might be Anduin Lothar, because it looks like he's wearing plate, so it could be Lothar. No, that's not Lothar. Lothar was bald. Was he? Alright. Probably yeah. Lane then. Because I've seen a picture of Lane from the movie. He's got really sweet black hair. And another painting of the sister. Um, let's see. There's another painting over here. I think this is I think this is Nilas Aran. I think this is Madi's father. Because he's kind of blondish. He's got a staff can't see the staff really well because it's a very small painting, but I think that might be a, the ATH minus the ravens because I don't see any birds in there. But that's kind of what ATH looks like. Uh, don't know what these red flags with the griffins are and the suns, but if you see this one here, uh, I think that's supposed to be a div because there's a one that's a female version. I'm pretty sure that's his mom, Egwin. I'm thinking that's, that's my div. Which again, it's a little weird, but all right. And then you got the sexy girl here in the purple one. I like her. I would like that outfit. It's little things like like the paintings that, you know, if you just run through here, kill stuff, you don't notice the paintings. But I like them. This is the Maiden of Virtue. Maiden of Virtue is a probably a Titan construct. There's nothing really known about her or why she's here. But Sargeras was a Titan. Uh, and honestly, I don't know how else she would have gotten in here because she's kind of tall. And there are things like her over in Northrend that are Titan constructs, uh, especially in Ulduar. Uh, she doesn't really have mechanics that I remember. I think you just uh, she just tries to stomp on you and hit you, but somebody take it slow, I guess. We'll see. She did something to the people in Melee. I think she, I think she had a consecration or something. Also, why right. is the Maiden of Virtue in the sex hallway? I don't know. 
it's things like that that I really wish there was more lore about this place. Somebody probably knows, because somebody probably chose that name for a reason, and they just never told anybody. You go talk to her after you've done what you've done down the hall. <laughs> Your behavior will not be tolerated. <laughs> Cuddles. So yeah, she's consecrating, she's um, silencing anybody in melee range, and she's in people with that holy fire, which used to do all of the damage. You used to have to be quick on your dispel to deal with that. Yeah, I remember that now. I healed in this in this raid. That was a your pain. impurity. And then the big incapacitation. Cleansed. If there was time walking for cars on, I would totally do it. Will your conscience be clear? I'm sorry about that. She just walked up to me. All the priest gear is dropping today. Nice. That happens. As you said, Cuddles, you're a naughty, naughty boy. Um, and of course we got statues of lions. Lions are the symbol of Stormwind. There's a lot of Stormwind motifs here. But... And... So now we go... Well, we could go to the kitchens, but there's nothing really there to see. It's just a lot of kitchen staff and ghosts, and they drop more green stuff. <clears throat> Down this way, there's actually not much to see, so that's why we're going to go see it, because people rarely do. I kind of like, if you look at the top of these uh, columns here, the... Uh, I guess I want to call them ravens, but they could be horses with a really cool uh, head armor piece. I'm not really sure. I guess it could be a dragon with a really cool head armor piece as well. But just kind of really something different, you know? You don't see much uh, artwork like that around. It's slightly creepy, but I like it. Sadly, door is locked. And I think the guy I'm looking for is over here. Yes, there is. If you look around these alcoves, there's these guys that are green. Um, he's dead just like the rest, but he actually has a story behind him. There's a few of these guys that are scattered around, and if you look at their names, like uh, Emberhold and stuff like that, and you go to the next zone over, which is Darkshire, uh, and look at the town records, these are all families come from Darkshire, so uh, basically they came over for a party and uh, yeah, kind of stayed. So, I think that's kind of neat. Because I like how it, it ties in with, with so much little stuff. Like, you could just make up a name, or you could just, like, you know, find the town register that you get as a quest in uh, Darkshire. And it's just, like, the way that it all works together just really super appeals to me. It's one of the reasons why I love this place so much. And that guy on that balcony over there was talking about how none of these guys are ever going to be able to get to see Medivh. I don't know what they're doing here. Yeah, so, that yeah, really falls in line to what you were talking about. Exactly, it's like a little bit of lore thing that serves no purpose whatsoever, except that it's cool. And you know, you don't get that much in dungeons anymore. I love the translog stuff from BC because they're, it's so interesting and weird. <clears throat> now we're going to the opera, which is... I like the opera. I only have one little problem with the opera. And Those I, ushers were a pain in the butt back in the day, too. <laughs> were they? Why? Yeah. What did they, they were, do? They had... Uh, I think they, they hit like a truck, first of all. And secondly, I think they had some like a debuff or something they put on the raid that you had to dispel quickly too. I just remember them being a really like it's like okay, is everyone full health? Everyone here? Everyone paying attention? Because the the ushers were were a thing. Sweet. See, I didn't get to do this back in the back in the day. So 
hearing about people who did and remember little things like that. I love it. This is over here is my only problem with this whole thing. There's actually a guy over here at the organ. So when you get the cars on music for your garrison, why don't, I mean, you should just be able to get it from him, because that would make perfect sense. I mean, who else is going to have the music? But the organ guy. But no. And at this point, um, most people will just jump down. We're not going to do that. Because it's actually the shortcut. But if you haven't noticed by now, I'm not really uh, shorting much cutting here. Um, yeah. So we go down this way. And I have a theory, which is that these uh, actors, that the clothes they wear, because that changes, and the clothes that they wear will tell you what play we're going to be playing because we're going to be in a play. Uh, it's only a theory I haven't been able to figure it out if it's actually true or not but that's what I think so therefore it must be true. The other thing I always liked about about the uh, the theater area is the the people down below that were in the middle at those at those seats down below when you'd kill them, you'd get almost nothing in the way of gold from them, so most people ended up just going around and dealing with the ushers and stuff and ignoring them. But after we do this event, we'll actually go to the second level and around the outside where like the the rich people sat and they were the they were they were the ones that had the most gold that, that you'd get in the in the instance. They they, they had that. hilarious. Yeah. So okay. Cuddle, since you've never been here, go talk to Barnes, please. Doesn't matter if you have theory, theater experience, Cuddles. You're going to be the star. Totally the star. Well, maybe Kurai's the star, but I will warn you, uh, this is going to take a while. I I love the intro that, that Barnes gives. Oh yeah, the you don't have sound turn on, turn it on ladies now. Ladies and gentlemen, to this evening's presentation. Tonight, we explore a tale of forbidden love. Hello. But beware, for not all love stories end happily, as you may find out. Sometimes, love pricks like a thorn. <laughs> But don't take it from me. See for yourself what tragedy lies ahead when the paths of star-crossed lovers meet. And now, on with the show! Love how he says, on with the show. I wanted that dude, my garrison, so bad. Oh, All right. that'd be awesome. Yeah, seriously. Okay, there are three different events, that, theater events, that we can get here. There's this one, which is Romeo and Juliet. Uh, there's Wizard of Oz, what and then there's, um, uh, what's the other one? Riding Hood. Uh, Red Riding Hood, yeah. Um, Cuddles, be my guest, don't kill her too fast. This is really a cool and very unique thing. I don't think there's anything like it in the game. And the gear was different based on which event you get to, which which was interesting as well. Oh yeah, if you got the red, uh, not Red Riding Hood, but Wizard of Oz, Dorothy drops ruby slippers, and if you yep. use them, it'll teleport you. That's right. Never got those when I was when I w was running through here back in the day, but I wanted them quite a bit. They were pretty highly sought after at the time. Oh yeah, they're still nice. I remember thinking the Wizard of Oz one was really funny because... You had to bring a hunter, well, we had to bring a hunter with us to fear the cowardly lion because hunters had an ability to scare beasts and it counted as a beast and it was the cowardly lion. So you'd scout control him by fearing him all over the stage while we dealt with the other three. Nice. That's cool. Romulo, I come. Oh, this do now I Now Romulo comes out to see. Defender. Oh my god, Romulo has the sexiest Will shirt in all me? Azeroth. Then head at thee, boy! Oh, 
Did they have any mechanics, or did we just have to kill them? I I don't know. This guy doesn't seem to be doing a whole no, lot. So he, I think it was you kill her, then you kill him, and then she raises her, and you fight them both at the same time, if I remember right. Yeah, these don't seem to have a special um, mechanic beyond that, so go ahead and stab him. Oh, thou smilest upon the stroke that murders. Come, gentle knight, and give me back my Romulo! I think they pretty much just try and stab us. Doesn't oh, seem I all that much different heard. from Scarlet Scarlet uh, oh, Cathedral. Happy dagger. Yes, she's got, this is thy sheep. She's got a charm. She rough. was a caster and then and he's just kind of a me melee DPS. Die. Ooh, the ribbon of Scarlet or Sa Ribbon of Sacrifice was a really good trinket back in the day too. And another yeah, good-looking dress. That. I remember wearing yeah. that ribbon. I don't know if I ever got it, but I think I did. Yeah, this door over here, the set to the side. You have to do the chess event or the the theater before the door will open, and it's the only way to get to the rest of the of the place, except for that side entrance, which won't open until you've been past this place anyway. Yep. So. But We've got the regular patrons, and then the philanthropists were the ones that had the, the much bigger gold pile that they would drop. Okay, Cuddles, this painting over here is for you, because you've never seen this. This is what Thousand Needles used to look like before it got flooded. Uh, now the water would be up to just about the tops of those bluffs. Back in the day, it was pretty awesome. It was kind of like the Grand Canyon. Um, yeah. I really miss the Thousand Needles. In the South, oh, there was no. those big salt flats, and they used to run speed, like pod racers out there, didn't they? Yes! That was so cool! I got on my Hunter, and like my fastest mount, and then my fastest flying mount, as we, you know, as our flight upgraded through the years. And I was dry to race those things. I was just trying to keep up to find out if they really went all the way around the track, or did they just kind of, like, fade out and then fade back in at the end, at the end you know? And there's another uh, tapestry of Bedeev over here. Another painting. Can't really see what the painting is of. It looks like some kind of a forest, though. It's pretty dark. I kind of like the paintings, though, to be honest. And up the stairs. Swamp, um, of, Swamp of Sorrow is this right nearby. Maybe it's of that. Because it looks kind of dark. Could be. Black Morass used to look like that as well. Very true. And also, Nordrisil, um, you know, where you fight uh, Archimond, the forest. That was kind of dark a little bit. And there's Thousand Needles again. Yeah, the I saw in the comments on Wowhead that they uh, nerfed the money and people were so upset because they used to come here and get rich. Thousand Needles again. Yeah, this all takes a dead end. So we go back up here. And we go down this way. Just love these columns. I'm sorry, I just do. We're headed towards, I think, the Crumbling Tower. No, wait, we're headed for the Curator in the Library. Wait, we are headed to the Crumbling Tower. Alright, Crumbling Tower. Uh, when Medivh was killed, and when he died, and when he brought back to life, and then he died again. Well, actually, he didn't die, he just kind of disappeared. But when he got brought back to life by his mom, uh, he came back to... Uh, cars on Barely and kind of sucked some of the power out of it and damaged it and so this whole tower kind of crumbled and fell in a bit and a lot of the really magicalness of it like the shifting time zones and stuff like that um kind of disappeared because you know the magic that supported it wasn't always here um this is master's terrace there's three of them <clears throat> the very coolest things in this entire place is here, but it has to be done through a quest line. So, Cuddles, that's your homework. Yeah, if we have to sell, now's a really good time. But, quest line. Okay, I need to turn that down just slightly. Alright, 
Quest line is uh, for home. What's it? Okay, quest line is for Nightbane, who is a dragon. Um, when Medivh was still alive, and he was starting to try and gather as much power as he could, and do the whole orc summoning thing and all that business, um, his mom came to save and said, "You're you shouldn't be doing this." And so he fought her, and then he banished her to Kalimdor. Arcanagos, who is one of the Blue Dragon Flight, also came to try and and uh, talk him out of uh, the stuff he was trying to do. Because um, the Blue Dragon Flight are the Dragon Flight of Magic, and so they kind of don't really want mortals dealing with it, and he was trying to deal a lot in it. Well, unfortunately for Arcanagos, but he killed him. Just kind of burned him up, and... Uh, if you do the quest line, you'll actually see the fight because, like I said, the whole shifting time thing in Karazhan. This is this is the instance of it that you'll see is Medivh fighting uh, Arcanagos and what happens to him, and it's really excellent. So I highly recommend it. Um, it starts with a quest called Medivh's Journal, which you get from Archmage Daltaros, who was outside. Uh, he wants you to speak to Ravian. So if anybody has that quest. Uh, let us know, because we can do that in the library. My guild, used really to use, cool. my guild used to use this skull sitting on the ground right here to mark where the tank had to stand, and then the ranged would be on either side. I can't believe that little skull. I remember it. I fought this, I don't know, maybe twice, three times. So long ago, I don't really remember anything other than just how incredibly cool it is. So I hope it's still as cool as I remember it, to be honest. Yeah, he used to scorch the ground under the range, so you had to move back and forth down the hallway, kind of like you have to do with Org Order. And he would summon a whole mess of skeleton dudes that you had to fight. It was a super cool fight. And it's got a real story behind it, which, you know, I love that kind of thing. Alright, um... I think that door also goes out to the stair, but we're going to go up this way, up through the cross stair. Um, there's going to be ghosts along the way, so uh, hack and slash, hack and slash. Because there's nothing really about them, they're just kind of here. And they drop silver, and they have a chance to drop greens and purples. Um, let's see. I always feel like weird trying to cross these things, especially the holes. Especially as a gnome, it's like I could fall right through it and then it's a long way down. And we're coming up on the library, um, which is if you have that quest, uh, this is where you. Uh, this is where you deal with it. The statue is, um, it reminds me of the dwarven constructs that the titans make in um, uh, Northrend. Might just be a statue. Uh, the loot we currently have up, Ritson's Lost Pendant. There's actually a story about that because the name Ritson is an anagram of something I forget, but it was actually the name of a character because there was a guy, uh, a raider, and he was in a guild, and then he went to work and became a developer and designer, uh, encounter designer for Blizzard. And Ritson, the anagram of Ritson, was his brother who was also in that guild. And so this was his uh, uh, kind of a, you know, hey bro, look what I put in the game for you. It's Ritson. If you go to, not Wintergrasp, uh, Nursepire? The Frost Zone that's uh, north of Orgrimmar, up on the very north east coast of, of of the continent of Kalimdor. If you go to the, the chasm that has the ice giants in it, there's a demon imp there, and that's Ritson. So, this is Ritson. He lost a pendant here. How cool is stuff like that? Uh, 
And these are mana worms, and yeah, they kind of sucked back in the day because they would explode and they would hurt a lot. It would steal your mana too, I think. Yep. So we kill these, and the, uh, there's a super tall dude that's coming this way who passed back and forth. And that's our boss, and so we're gonna kill him slow. Yeah, those worms would steal mana, so you'd run out of mana until you killed them, and then they, then they gave you your mana back from the like tranquility look. It's a, a pain to heal, basically. Enforced. Oh yeah. I don't know if this guy was in the books, but I mean, he's kind of like the constructs that the Draenei have. So, I mean, why is it here? I don't know. I wish I knew. There's so many questions like that in this place. And also, why are there pictures of, or statues of owls? I don't know. I would like to know. Has he got any of the mechanics, or is he just, like, trying to stab yeah. you? He throws out these astral flares, and it costs him 10% of his mana, I think, Gallery for all mount. Will be so he enforced. And then when he runs out of mana, he regens his mana, and he does, like... Major, what's that spell where you regen mana? Innovate or something like that? Nah, for mages. They tornado themselves, and they get mana back. Oh, I don't know. I don't play mage. Well... Um, one of the loot drops of this guy is Garona's Signet Ring, and Garona is the legendary follower we got for the for the garrison. She's a half orc. She's half orc, half Draenei. She works for uh, Gul'dan, or did, uh, well, still does, or did before she became our follower anyway. Rules will be strictly enforced. And in the book, Gul'dan sent her here, and she and Medivh had kind of a thing, and she got pregnant by him. Uh, before he got killed. Your request. Um, so yeah, I kind of like to read the book and figure out how that happened and what happened with the child, but I probably don't want to know. Uh, it was a comic book, and he's mm, so he's doing he's evocating right now, and he's taking three times as much damage. So this would be the burn phase. Then you'd have to switch back to astral player control. That's the entire fight. Okay. So, a long fight. Especially Gallery with those mana worms. Will be strictly enforced. Curator is no longer operation. So, Medan is Medivh and Garona's son. And he is a paladin shaman. So, that's interesting. And was appropriately put into a comic book rather than an actual book. Did not know that. Uh, this is the library, and so if you have that quest, let us know because we can we can go do that. Because there's some really oblivious mages hanging out in the library just studying while these things are walking around. But all right, because I guess that's what scholars do. Okay, here's Ravian, and here's the guy you would talk to. He sent you to talk to one of the other people in here, who sends you to talk to another person in here, and uh, you get shunted around a bit, and eventually you go talk to uh, Shade of Iran, because he's got a book or something. Used to be a ton of books in here for the well read um, achievement, too. Yeah, and there's a fun thing with books later on that I remember is <clears throat> in later sections of this place, there's books that are just lying all over the floor, and you were supposed to uh, pick up a certain one for your class type because they would give you like a buff, I think, like a strength buff or an agility buff, so you had to get the right book for. For what you were, and if you got the wrong book, people got really mad at me.
That was a great way to end that sentence. Thank you. <laughs> and just in general, if you got the wrong book, I got yelled at. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of the books. Out. They're just lying all over the place. This, um, if, you know, there's so many actual books in the game that you can go up and, and click on them and read them or get them as loot or something. And, I, you know, just as a personal thing, I would love to have every single book in the game actually in this library somewhere and you could just kind of roam around and read it. But that's just me. I mean, it serves no purpose. It would just be one of those kind of that's cool kind of things. So these guys are hard to kill back in the day. When they get low, they get real big and they explode. You would have to incapacitate them somehow to keep them from doing that. And my job as the Holy Beast was, All right, it's about to die. Fear it. That was a lot my of fun. earliest memories, yeah. My earliest memories of these guys is uh, trying to sneak through here without getting close to them. So, waiting for them to path so there'd be like a path between them so that I could sneak through. Uh, and hope I got the aggro range right, radiuses. Uh, sometimes it worked. Where's the exit? Oh, here it is. And when I first came through here, this place gave me uh, vertigo. <laughs> Don't look down. But I found a few things that I can't seem to damage as an arcane mage. I think I read something about that, that there's something in here that, uh... These man, these mana, these mana warps are, not, and then the, even the worms down below were. I was having trouble. Either either they were glitching or something. I wasn't able to do. Anything. So I'm just gonna stand over here for no reason and just kind of look at the bookcase because I like books because I'm a mage. So maybe someone wants to go touch the bookcase. It's a perplexing bookcase, so... It's very perplexing. Good thing I'm a mage. And we're about to go see a demon. But he's not a very big one. He's just kind of small. And some satyrs. Well, a satyr and some small demons. This is Terrestrian Ilhoof. He actually was in a comic book or a graphic novel or something like that. There's a couple of twin girls that uh, their dad came here to try and clean out the evil of the place. He got killed. They got raised as orphans by other people. Came back to try and save their dad and it didn't work out so well. But they got to see their dad and their dad saved them even though he was dead. And so I guess it was heartwarming or something. So, yeah. After you, Cuddles. Ah, you're just in time. The ritual. Remember, he's got like this sacrifice ability, if I remember right. He pulls really? somebody to the to the middle of the circle there. Maybe yeah. I'm thinking of something else. No, I think it's this one. Or he would, he would do something. He would incapacitate you somehow, and you'd have to attack the chains. This there it is. Offering, oh great one. Yeah. Are you gonna die? I know that demons are just gonna keep pouring out of those portals. Does anybody close them, or do you just have to kill him to close it? Yeah, it was just add control. You just have to keep killing them. I wonder how many we can get. But I think that might be the whole thing. It's he got his his big limps, and it's just like gotta put some DPS in the little limps, or else they'll overwhelm us. And then every once in a while he'd sacrifice somebody. Let this sacrifice. Now those this demons are coming out pretty fast. That must have been a hell of the time. 
Yeah, but they didn't have a lot of health, I don't think. I guess, but was there like a lot of AE back in the day? Because otherwise, that's a lot of tab and tab and tab and tab and tab and tab. And tab. Yeah, I mean, you know, they still had things like Blizzard and Hellfire and. You, yeah, you still need to have more than one person AoEing them down. Oh, for sure. So the combination uh, yeah, of Volley. Oh, I miss Volley. That was such a good spell. My life is yours, oh great one. Another weapon enchant. Oh, awesome. Nice. One, one I, time, I went over the edge of one of these because I didn't, you know, wasn't thinking. So I just, oh, there, I'm sure there's a ramp here. Let me just, ah, ah, all the way down. This is the room for Shade of Ron, who is uh, Medivh's father, who Medivh's killed by accident when he came into his full magical potential, i.e. Sargeras woke up inside of him, because that went perfectly well for everybody concerned. Everybody in, because I do remember getting locked out of this place a couple times. Uh, he's a mage, he's a ghost, but he's basically a mage, he does magey stuff, he summons a, a frost elemental, does some fire spells. What of knocked you up in the sky? It's fun. I remember the don't move, and somebody always moved, didn't they, Barf? Every time. Oh my god. He's got this ability where he puts something, the where he basically, wraith. yeah, the flame wraith, and all anyone had to do was not move, like, at all. And so you'd say, don't move, don't move, and Invariably, somebody would move, and it would cause a big AoE damage to everybody. After you, Cuddles. Please! No more! I shall oh, finish yet! He's gone mad! No. Uh -huh. I have a few more tricks up my sleeve. Even, I don't even think I touched him. Well, he was an old man. So he was summoning the water elementals there, and they walked in a big circle around the room, and all you had to do was get out of their way, and it was fine. Play everything we covered. Um, it was just a circle of fire on the ground around you. And if you moved, it did all the damage. But if you stood still, you were fine. And the third thing he would do is pull everybody into the center of the room and then do a big arcane explosion. But you could be just quick enough when you landed at his feet to run back out to the wall again, and then his arcane explosion wouldn't hit you. But you had to move right away. And that was the whole fight. This is the room with those books, right? Yeah, I think it is. It might have been other rooms as well, but I'm, I'm thinking this is one of them at least. I have so strong memories of those those books. I seem to recall this room as being one of them. Yeah, I'm mousing over, and I'm not getting anything, so maybe that was taken out, which is just kind of too bad. Oh, look up! <laughs> oh, nice. Very nice. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. No, that was the other play. <laughs> Which is actually one of my favorites. I really like the Dorothy one. 
Did I miss the dragon? No, I hope not. Up. Okay. I do get a little turned around sometimes. Uh, it's easy with all those weird passages down there. This room, this thing right here, had books in it too. They must have taken it out. Because it was these little ones and like... You couldn't even use the color of the book as an, an indication. You actually had to mouse over it in order to see which one it was because, like, one set of books, the green one would be strength, and then the next one, the red one, would be a book that, that would be for strength. It's such a pain. Yep. There's no real story for these particular guys. They were just a BC thing that they came in and steal real magic, so... This was one of my very favorite fights at the time because it's kind of like that bird thing in um, uh, Spires of Iraq, the the first dungeon there, the bird dungeon. So what happens is that you start him up, and then there's these three colored beams that come at him, and one's red, one's green, and I don't know, maybe there's blue or something like that. One of them heals him, one of them buffs him, and I forget what the other one does, something like that. So you had to stand in the beams, but not stand too long, because it would kill you. So, um, you had, like, the whole race, like, jumping in the beams, jumping out of the beams. You know, get the beam, get the beam! You know, I'm about to die! And, you know, it was really cool. So, anyway. Roll! Doesn't he put, like, some void zones down, too, if I remember right? I'm not sure. I mostly remember the beams because I thought that was just so much fun. And there's other cool stuff in here in this room, so remind me after the fight. So the blue beam here increases damage dealt, but also reduces healing received and damage taken by spells. Yeah, there's the void zone. Looks yeah. like the, the green one increased healing done. Yeah. And, and then, then when you stand out of it, you can't get it anymore. You, yeah, you can't get that one. So teams would design rotations and like you messed up the rotation, it basically ended the fight. I don't remember what this is. I don't either, but it, that looks cool. He came mute and then he th breathed fire. I remember right. Man, I would totally farm that mount. That would be sweet. Do you think he's going to shift back? Yeah, he, it's like timed, I think. There he goes. Yeah, see this is, I thought this was a really cool encounter. It's very, you know, the mechanics mattered back in the day. I'm not actually sure why he's here. Um, I didn't find any information about why he's here, but one of the things he drops is a, <coughs> is a netherwing egg, and he turned those in in BC over in uh, Shadow Moon Valley, uh, at the netherwing ledge. There's some orcs that you can go and do some quests, and you get a netherwing drake if you do, you're up high enough, and you turn in the eggs, basically. So if you get an egg, that's what you do with it. It's really a nice dragon model. Yeah, so one of these beams heals him for... and it goes up how much it heals him every second that he's in it. One causes a damage reduction that stacks and gets more and more damage reduced that he takes. And then one increases his damage and it goes up every second that he's in the beam as well. So it make him tougher and uh, keep him, heal him and uh, reduce your own damage on him if you didn't stand in those things correctly. So 
Sounds good to me. Um, there's a egg over here on a pillar. It doesn't have the spikes like dragon eggs normally do, but it actually does have a... Uh, it looks like a dragon egg. And if you look on the desk, it's like really super tiny, but there's a little bitty like art, like sculpture of a white tiger. I think it's neat, because I like a white tiger. And you look at the pink rocks, and they're from Draenor, for instance. So it's like, he never went to Draenor. And it's one of the weird things, and that's why people are like, so is Khadgar really medieval? Because, you know, all this stuff. I don't know. Maybe. He is running around without the ash. And then he's got this, the nether spike drop, the nether wing egg that you used to gain rep to get the nether, the nether drakes, right? From Shadow Moon? Yep, that's the one. I always like this globe over here as well. Because Blizzard actually does update it, but uh, back in the day it didn't have Pandaria and it didn't have Northrend. And so when they update the maps, they all automatically update the world. But it's got like, you know, here be dragons and stuff. And if you look, there's like a really big area that's got nothing on it but that dragon. So I like little things like that. And I always try to look over here in the, in the uh, telescope because if you could see something from it, I always thought that'd be pretty neat. But anyway. These banners up on the wall, the one on the left, I think is Egwin, his mother. Because, I don't know, there's just something about the one on the left and the one on the right, which I think is him. Uh, it just seems kind of like, I don't know, like they might be related, but I also really like her dress. But I think that might be Egwin. Uh, most powerful female, female mage, maybe including Jaina, maybe not, I don't know. In her prime, she was pow more powerful than Jaina. Absolutely. Um, she and Jaina actually both lived in Theramore at the same time at one point. Oh, nice. Of course, she also cheated because she had the um, the other mages from the Council of Tearsfall uh, funneling their magic through her to make her even more powerful. But, yeah. yeah. So, the Guardian of Tearsfall is supposed to return their power when their job is finished, and Eowyn decided, no. I'm not doing that. I am instead going to have a son and give my power to him. I can't have it back. Or nan or poo poo. Yeah. Okay. We're actually getting kind of near the near the end here, sad to say. Um, here's another vendor. Um, He's so colorful. I know. I think there's a toy that you can actually look like one of these guys, but I don't know what it is, and I wish I did, because, yeah. And through these doors over here is the chess event, which is pretty famous, and I'm pretty sure extremely unique, and I suck at this. I seriously do. So, <laughs> I know the strategy you're supposed to do. Um, does everybody be, know the event except Cuddles? To be fair, Medivh cheats, so... Yes, he does. <laughs> okay, some of you, um, sometimes if you're using a, a special UI, uh, it can mess up on this event. If that happens, you're going to get stuck in the chess piece that you choose. So, um, for instance, mine will do that. So I'll pick a guy and stick in it till I die. Um, Anybody in particular want to be the king, or do we want to make Cuddles the king? Uh, if so, we're going to have to explain this. King Cuddles. Oh, that's scary. Well, here's Medivh over here. So you talk to Medivh to start this up. Um, and I keep picking on Cuddles, because he says he's never been here, and so I think that he should see everything. But that's just me. He's, uh, he's wearing his traditional feathery clothing, and he's got a Yes. Yep. Yes, he does. I think it's a pretty snazzy look, to be honest. I can't wait to see what they do with him in the movie, because he's so complicated and interesting that I really wanted to see, because he'll be, unless they change it, partly Sargeras in the movie. 
So, yeah. But um, the way this works is that you talk to him, and then you go pick a chess piece, because you become the chess piece. You can jump out of the chess piece, unless your AI or UI messes up. When you are a chess piece, you'll have four abilities. Uh, one of them is to move one hex, well, one square on the chessboard. One of them is to turn, to you know, left, right, sideways, whatever. Uh, one of them is like an attack, and the other is some kind of buff or heal or something like that. So the first one is walk, second one is turn, the third and the fourth are the ones you're probably going to want to use the most. Um, the the strategy that I'm told to solo this, that I've never gotten to work, is that you go to your king, you go at the pawn in front of the king, move him out one, because Medivh cheats, you're going to need that square open, and then you jump in, uh, I don't know, like mage or something like that, and just do a bunch of damage till you die. And every time the Medivh cheats, you have to move out of the hex. You'll see. So you need to have that hex open. Um, the pieces will automatically attack what's in front of them, so there's that. But that's pretty much the basics of it. So I guess everybody pick your piece and Cuddles can start us up. Everybody good to go? Yep. And if we were Horde, we would be on the other side. Oh, by the way, uh, the king on the alliance side is King Lane who is the king and going to be the king in the movie. Yay. And the other side is War Chief Blackhand, who you probably have heard of lately because Draenor. So, ready. Hey there. I have a good one. Certainly. The king's actually a pretty good piece in this. He's not helpless. Um, he's not able to solo anything. I mean, you know, solo the it works or anything like that, but he's still pretty powerful. Uh -huh. So I'm in the conjure and I need to get move. I need the footman in front of me to move forward so I can start doing damage to Blackhand. Is anybody in the king? Because I can't jump out. Sounds fine. Certainly. Um, can you unclick the control piece buff? No, there's something in my UI that uh, I click it, but nothing happens. So, but you know, it's all right. Sounds fine. <laughs> Savannah so jumped in in front of me instead. I didn't get a chance to move forward. Uh -huh. Suddenly. Yes. Very slowly takes damage to Black Man. Move out of the fire if you're standing in it. Watch your uh, step, Major. Double. Sounds fine. The transparent strategy. Yeah, the Orc Warlocks are the healers on their side, so no if you can, kill those ones. This event is actually supposed to represent the first war. First war is really cool, and I am really looking forward yes, to seeing that in the movie. I assume that's what the they're going to do. Destroy them. Oh. 
no matter. The transparent strategy. That we're fighting Black Hand, and he had like 100k health to begin with. You dispute my honor. Yeah, sadly, our advanced gear and health don't help here. Yay, us! And for this one, the treasure chest is over between the columns below where we entered. And the other side has the door to get out. And I'm just waiting to get kicked out so I can move. There we go. I did this so many times on the Horde side that I just instinctively went down the staircase towards the Horde side instead of the Alliance. Yeah, that's what I do. Oh, I love that shield. Now, as I understand it, after you finish it, you can reset the board and then play both sides at the same time and play against each other. That would be fun. Here, we are going to run into Medea's bedroom, which is going to make you really wonder a lot more about him than you already do. And there's more paintings on the wall. Different ones, I think. Same people, just different outfits. It's a lot of stone in that bed. And so that I've ever said, you know, you know what my bed needs? I need a stonemason for my bed. Yeah, I remember when we ran this, we would all come up here and take our pictures, like just the guild screenshot. Not in front of the boss or anything, we took it here, on the team's bed. So that is so... something. All right, we're going back to the spiral stairs to go up more, I guess. So we're almost done. Just got one more boss to go. And seriously, who puts a, a giant portrait of your mom in your bedroom staring at you? That's just not right. There are skeletal griffins outside right now. Really? Yeah, I went out onto this terrace out here and 
There he is, just some sort of undead Jamie Jams. Oh, nice! Cuddle, stop taunting the dead bird. Okay, let's see. Did we come in like a different way? Yeah. We must have. Oh, here it is. Yes. Okay. This place is so, so weird. Alright, last boss. Prince Melkazar. He is a demon lord. Eredar lord of the Burning Legion. He's kind of tall. Looks a lot like the guys we've been fighting in Narchmond. As you'll see, a little shorter. He drops a pet, so if a pet drops, um, everybody need. He also drops Gorhal, which is the axe of Grom Cream. How he got it, we don't know. But, yeah. So, uh, I think this might be the only place in the game you can get Gorhal. Or, maybe that's different now, but I think back in the day this, is, this was the place. And it is kind of a cool looking axe. I think Garage drops a version of it in Siege, but it's not the actual real model. It's got all stuff on it. Yeah. Um, Lore doesn't really explain what he's doing here. He wasn't here when Medi was here that I'm aware of. He kind of came afterwards. Because they kind of... Um, they're attracted to magic as a source of power. It's also dangerous, so they try and, like, kill it when they find it. So being just this hugely magical place, it was kind of, uh, you know, they would rather ha they have it than somebody else have it. Um, sky is really weird, so nobody's really sure where we are, if we're in the Twisting Nether or somewhere else. I don't know. But... Kind of weird. I don't know anything about this fight because I rarely get up here because chess game. It's got a couple of phases. He summons weapons. I think it's based on his health. That sounds right. right. We will see. Madness has brought you here to me. I shall be your doing. Simple fools, time is the fire in which you'll burn. Oh yeah, the weapons, he actually can use them, and I think he can animate them, uh, the ones that are in his loot table. That's what I think I read somewhere. All realities, all dimensions are open to me. Try not to die, guys. Surely, you did not think you could win. Oops. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Infernals. That's a thing, too. They don't move, they just pulsate, and you can't... They slowly fill the room. Yeah. How can you hope to stand Wow. How did I die? That hurt. Power. He drops you to one, and then if you take any damage, you get killed, I think. But then he brings you back up again. Okay. You face not Melkazar alone, but the legions I command. Are his weapons out there yet? Yeah, Cuddles is tanking the axe. Go cuddles. You face not Melkazar alone, but the legions I command. You face not Melkazar alone, but the legions I command. Can you imagine someone with that voice doing a podcast? I refuse to concede defeat. 
I am a prince of the Eridan. Woohoo! I am... And there's Gorhal. Can anybody use it? I have one. And that's Karazhan, so thank you for coming, and I really enjoyed it. So thank you very much for coming. Woohoo! Well, everybody, thank you so very much for the very first official CTR Guild lore tour. Alessander, thank you so very, very much for your time, for your effort that you put into this, and most of all, for your knowledge. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. You did an absolutely phenomenal job. I know everyone here is grateful for it. Now guys, there's a couple things that I want to mention before we go get out of here. First and foremost, if you go to tiny URL, tiny.url slash well played party, you will find a Kickstarter for the well played party, which is the new iteration of the familiar CTR Smash Bash which is our annual CTR Guild BlizzCon party. If you don't know anything about it, check it out. Follow at WellPlayedParty on the Twitter machine. Absolutely phenomenal. It's going to be great. In the past, we've had guests such as Celestalon. A lot of the podcast community will be there because, as you know from being in CTR, you cannot swing a stick without hitting eight people that have their own podcast, which, segue time... My name is Cuddles. You can find me on Twitter at Mullet863. Or you can find my podcast, The Game Case Show, on thegamecase.com. Or follow us on Twitter at The Game Case Show. Thank you so very much for coming out, guys. We really appreciate it. This video is going to go up on YouTube here very shortly. It's also going to be available as a highlight on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv backslash The Game Case. Thank you again, Alessander. Thank you so much for your time. This was absolutely amazing. I had a blast. And thank you guys for actually knowing the fights because it was really cool talking about the old days and remembering how things used to be. That was fun. Yeah, thanks so much for doing this. Got a portal up the Storm Shield if you wish to take that. Cuddles, these kind of like oddball events are super cool.